There are a number of states across the country that have initiated a number of different payment and delivery system reform activities. Um, and really from coast to coast and, and border to border almost, uh, the, the, the largest ones in terms of scope and uh, breadth probably include New York State, uh, Tennessee, Ohio, large states, um, uh, and then on the West Coast, Oregon, Washington, California. All of them have a mix of different types of payment models that they're uh, looking at, evaluating, uh, testing in a really rigorous way and a, a broad fashion. So there is really a fair amount of activity going on um, and continuing to uh, increase. So faced with uh, changing payment that is initiated either by, by, by private sector or public sector payers, uh, providers uh, and health plans um, are reacting in, in different ways. Uh, some of them um, are espousing the change, which uh, is, I'd say, that's probably the minority. Uh, the majority are struggling to figure out how to change their business models. Uh, this is an industry that has been steeped in, in, a, in a fairly classic business model that involves delivering services and getting paid for those services, uh, somewhat of a cost plus business model. Uh, to now having a business model that is much more focused on delivering value, and that's a difficult transition. On the payer side, uh, this involves a number of shifts from how they contract and how their contractors go out and interact with provider organizations on something else than negotiating a discount on a fee schedule. But it also involves changing the way they account for care and pay for care, so that's a much more a deeper uh, organizational operational change that could involve uh, adding new systems, new accounting systems, new claim systems, et cetera. On the, on the provider side, uh, it, it, there are similar uh, levels of, of uh, 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 operational, administrative, and clinical changes that need to occur. On the clinical side, it really is about patient management. Um, and while one would think that would be a natural uh, side effect of delivering care, moving from something that's highly transaction focused, in other words, I'm delivering a service for a patient at a point in time, or a set of services for a patient at a point in time, to thinking about this over a period of time. I now have a patient during the course of a year. I have a patient uh, during a course of several months for a particular procedure. I need to think about how to manage that patient and, that, and the care of that patient over a continuum. So that's one change is the length of time. Instead of being very, very tight over maybe a day, or a couple of days, or even a few hours, you're now dealing with months and, and, and in some cases a year. The second is that I may not necessarily control all of the aspects of the care that's being delivered to that particular patient. There are pieces that I might directly control, the services I provide or the services my organization provides, but then there are other pieces uh, from other providers who might deliver services to that patient also. I need to understand that. In other words, I have to start thinking of myself not just as a team within my own system, which is hard enough, but as a team, maybe with other providers across different systems, because we're all delivering care to a patient for a particular condition or set of conditions and over that period of time. Um, that requires a tremendous amount of change. Change in how your information systems work, change in how you collaborate with other providers, change in how you uh, uh, coordinate care around a patient. So um, all of this is good, uh, but uh, I think we all recognize that it, it requires a different thinking. It requires a different thinking from the pay organizations, from the provider organizations. There have been a number uh, on either side that over the years have uh, been looking forward to this change and have enacted uh, some process improvements internally. The majority are trying to figure it out. So uh, we need to spread that and, 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 and try to encourage collaboration as much as possible between organizations so that they learn faster and uh, can improve that migration from where they are today to where we would all like to see them go. Well, I wish there were actually more collaboration between the private and the public sector in moving these initiatives forward. Uh, it, it's, um, 
it's somewhat disheartening to see that there are only a few instances across the country where that's effectively going on. Uh, I would say the best example may be uh, the state of Tennessee where uh, the state has engaged not just uh, the state public payer, i.e. the Medicaid plan, but also through its employee benefit plan, it's engaged private sector payers um, uh, to try to enact at the same time and implement similar types of uh, payment reform efforts for providers. Generally speaking, when we look across the country, uh, even between public sector payers, i.e. the federal government with Medicare, uh, state governments with Medicaid, there's very little coordination going on. Uh, the programs that are important to Medicare may not be important to Medicaid. Uh, in other words, if you're leading Medicare and you're looking at alternative payment models, different types of initiatives, you're focusing on the elderly, you're focusing on things that matter to an elderly population. If you're in Medicaid, you worry about pregnancies and deliveries and children and uh, people who may be of a younger age than the folks in Medicaid. If you're a commercial payer, you're somewhere in between. Right? You've got young families, medium age people, and some uh, older, but not as old as Medicare. So I, so I think what's happened is that most of the payer organizations have approach payment reform, uh, the institution of alternative payment models, what they focus on um, in, in areas that matter to them, and those areas are different across payers. There is a de facto collaboration in the sense that the models that are being developed and tested and implemented are very similar. So for example, Medicare is using uh, mostly these total cost of care programs. Example are the Medicare Shared Savings Program, the ACO programs. There are lots of similar type of programs that are being implemented in the private sector and with state Medicaid agency. The focus, right, the population you focus on may be different, but at least the models are relatively similar. So from a provider perspective, this is where it gets a little dicey because the models are similar, so I understand them. I know if it's total cost of care. I understand if it's a bundle payment arrangement. I get it if it's a primary care focused arrangement. But for every one of those payers, I'm asked to focus on a slightly different population. So one might say, well, that's OK. If you've got a Medicare shared savings program, you've got a Medicaid shared savings program, and you've got a commercial uh, shared savings program, you've got a shared savings program, and everyone's underneath it. And yes, everyone's underneath it. But where the savings may accrue on the Medicare population, are different than where the savings may accrue on the Medicaid population and different where the savings may accrue on uh, the commercial population. And sometimes that creates both a uh, potential for conflict within an organization. What should I focus on first? Because I've got limited resources. Which clinical areas? Where am I going to get the biggest bang for that investment? In some cases, it could even create a potential conflict. In other words, um, what I'm being asked to do on Medicare may hurt me on Medicaid or commercial, and vice versa. So how do I manage those issues? And uh, uh, that really is ultimately the, the, the I, I'm not sure that we're ever going to reconcile this, by the way, because populations are different. Payers represent different populations. And um, that's true in the fee-for-service world. It's true in the value-based payment world. And I think uh, providers who are on the receiving end of all of these programs should worry less about the harmonization of all of the programs more than make those tough choices. What should I focus on first that's going to make a difference today that's going to allow me to then reinvest in, in adding more populations underneath these programs and yet more populations? And it sounds like a, a um, maybe a little harsh a uh, cold look at how uh, an organization should uh, embark in, in this road to value-based uh, payment, but every organization has limited resources and everyone has to make a tough decision. And so I think part of that is just understanding what the trade-offs are between the different programs that the different payers offer um, and doing the best having a roadmap that ultimately includes everyone but understanding that you got a starting point, a middle point, and an end point.